Shadow Secretary of State, for levelling up. Lisa Nandy, your thoughts on that, first of all? I mean, I, you know, I think what, what is happening is extraordinary. It's not just that there are a lot of families around the country this morning who are looking at the the revelations that have come to light in this report and the Prime Minister's response and thinking, how can it possibly be that we did follow these rules when the Prime Minister was telling us that they were important and yet he presided over rot that ran right the way through the heart of government uh, and refused to apologise, refused to acknowledge it, refused to own up to it until he was in serious trouble and caught red-handed. It's that we're now in the extraordinary position of having a Prime Minister who has lied, has lied to the public, has lied to the House of Commons. You cannot trust the word that he said. Says. So when he says, I'll deal with the cost of living crisis, when he says, I'll stand up to Russian aggression in Ukraine, what do you do? Because you cannot trust a word that this man says. 400 people, more than 400 people work in Downing Street. He can't possibly be expected to know what they're all up to. He was there. I mean, he was there. there for at, all of them. He was there at a number of these events. There were emails in those um, WhatsApp messages that are in that report, and it makes for really, really uncomfortable reading for anyone who's lived through this and, and remembers starkly how difficult it was for most families in this country, where there were several messages that were sent at the time that shows that staff, senior staff in Downing Street knew what they were doing was wrong and were trying to avoid being caught. There were messages going to staff saying, please leave by the back door because there's too much drunkenness going on in Downing Street. There were staff clubbing together to buy fridges and suitcases of wine being smuggled through the back well, door. He has, to take, he has to take some responsibility but for the you culture accept that, that he, he, he might not have known. You're saying that he accept, must accept responsibility, but he might not have known what was going on. It's not for me to say whether he knew or not. It's for the Sue Gray inquiry and the report makes very clear that the Prime Minister came to Parliament. He told us that there was no party and and then he turned out he was actually at one of these parties. It's He's lied to the House of Commons, but more importantly, he's lied to the public. People put their trust in government to an extraordinary degree during the pandemic because we had to be in it together in order to get through it. And my inbox is absolutely full of people this morning saying, my dad died, I didn't say goodbye, and I now feel, why didn't I just take the fine? The Prime Minister's taken no responsibility, but I did. People feel like they... They did the wrong thing. It's just heartbreaking when you consider that they were doing it because it was in the interest of the country and he was walking out of Downing Street while all this was going on and standing in front of the public and telling us this is, the, this is the right thing to do. They might have looked at all of this and they've only fined him once. But, but they've, they fined him for breaking his own rules. He said he would take responsibility, but he hasn't taken responsibility. He hasn't resigned. He only apologised when he was caught. He's not sorry that he did it. He's sorry that he got caught. And what was striking yesterday is that the debate that was happening very publicly in the House of Commons amongst Conservative MPs and ministers about what the Prime Minister has done was very much about whether it was in the interests of the Conservative Party to junk him or not. Still, the country was completely cut out of this conversation. The debate wasn't, have we done the wrong thing? Is this in the interests of the country, that we have a Prime Minister that cannot be trusted. The debate was, are we going to win the next election or not with this man in charge? Yeah, but he is bomb he's as bomb-proof as the metal front door of Downing Street at the moment because the backbenchers will not vote against him. So what is the point in having an investigation into whether he misled Parliament because he would it would have to be voted on in the chamber? I think it does matter whether you've got a Prime Minister who tells the truth or not, who has honesty, integrity and upholds proper standards in office. I think it matters to a lot of people in this country. But it doesn't just matter because of party gate. It matters because trust is the glue that holds the whole system together. If you can't trust him on this, how on earth can you trust him when he says he's going to help people with soaring inflation rates, when he says that he's going to stand up to Russian aggression? If you can't trust a word that he says, why would you trust him on anything else? Well, we can trust him because he says that um, there's going to be... Well, we hear there's going to be a windfall tax later on. We, we hear it and I, I very much hope that it is well, true. It will, we, we believe it's going to happen. I, I mean, I strongly suspect there will be, there will be action today. The, it's been briefed into the papers, but also because... Several times over the last few months, the Prime Minister has taken action when he's been in real trouble in order to distract from the troubles in government. We would very much welcome some action on the cost of living. For months now, the Chancellor has been telling us it's not possible to have a windfall tax on companies that made record profits but he's during the pandemic. But he's going to have one. I, th I think now it looks like it turns out that it is possible to do that. What we want to see today is not just money going to everybody, £200 off people's energy bills to help people... Who 
who are struggling, but money that is targeted at those most in need. The plan that we've put forward would knock £600 off energy bills for those most struggling we at the moment. We believe they further than what Labour suggested. I, I hope so. I hope what we'll see is a proper package of measures today that actually get help to people. I don't know why they've dithered and delayed for seven months. I strongly suspect they're acting now because they think it's in their interests to deflect from the Sue Gray report. It, but I'm did, very glad to see well, it. Well, I did put that to uh, the Labour, the uh, Conservative Minister this morning, and he said it was because we were waiting for the Ofgem report. They got that earlier on this week, and now they're, they're working as quickly as they possibly but we, can. We are the only country, the only major economy in the world that has put up taxes on working people at a time of crisis for most families and businesses. We've had 15 tax rises since Boris Johnson took office. We've been saying for months now to this government, you've got to get help to people now. We need a proper package of measures today, not just a windfall tax on the big oil and gas producers to knock money off people's energy bills, but lo a long-term plan to actually help to deal with what is now a crisis for most families and businesses across the country. This week in the House of Commons, the government had the chance to act on that, to take action to invest in retrofitting homes that would knock money off people's energy bills, not just this year, but next year and every year from now onwards. And the government decided not to do it. We've got this country has got to have a plan in order to help people. That Every other country in the world is doing this. We need a government that backs its people and steps up to the scale of the crisis that but we've you, got. But you must at least give them some sort of bouquet for coming up with the, for the, with the windfall tax and that's going to go quite a long way to try to help people in your constituency. But I would give them, I would, I would applaud them if they back down and said we were wrong this is possible we can do this and they backed our plans to do it uh, we've got to get money back into people's pockets i've been challenged on your show and many others over the last few months about this whether it's possible whether it's affordable whether we can do it or not but every pound that goes back into the pockets of working people at the moment is a real godsend for a lot of people in wigan in my constituency and across the country this is the difference between whether you can get through the weekend or you know feed your kids or whether you have bare cupboards and you don't know what you're going to tell your own family. OK, um, it's good to talk to you as always. Thanks very Thank much you. indeed for joining us. Thank you.